Uh, I went to South Starch and uh, I told you about the um, while I was there um, the postman uh, had celebrated his he was pensioned off he, was, he celebrated his retirement and uh, <coughs> In the Sunday Dispatch, uh, that, that would have been in 1935, um, was a photograph of, of the postman handing his last let delivery on South Stack after a span of 40 years as a po in the post office. And um, I was the keeper that, that and there was a photograph, and that was in the Sunday Dispatch. Uh, and, and I had a copy of it, but um, I don't know what happened to it. Uh, but what I, uh, you've been to the South, St South Stack, and halfway down in the steps, there was a recess, I remember, where Queen Victoria yeah. sat. Something. That's true, isn't it? We were told that it was called Victoria's Seat and they carved it out especially for her role. That's right. Behind. That's right, yeah. Well, he remarked about it, whether he was in the service while Queen Victoria was um, in on the throne or not, I don't know. But I would like to hear something about the uh, what comes to my mind that the, the photographers was Fox comes into my mind company name of Fox who were the um, photographers for the uh, who took the photographs down at the bottom of the steps Pardon? Down at the bottom of the steps, by the stack, what was the bridge then? What was the? The bridge, across. There was the bridge, yes. What sort was it? Was it a rope bridge or? Um, well, it moved when you went across. You know, it was uh, that sort of a movement, if, if I remember rightly. Another interesting point, things were primitive in those days. It was a, a land station, you know, uh, to my surprise, and um, Simpkin, not Simpkin. Well, anyway, one of the keepers, there was a, the families were there, and one of the one of the keepers' daughters had a bedroom next to the super's quarters. Well, strangely enough, she had to get through, go through my room to get to her room. And um, I always remember it was, it was strange that uh, it was explained to me that, you know, don't be surprised if somebody comes through. And uh, that, that's, that's, that's the only episode of that. Uh, there was no romance or anything that took place there. With that, I thought you was building up to something. Huh? Well, <laughs> all I know that she was courting a, a bloke that worked on the railway, and he was, you know, a ticket. Uh, Did he used to come thing. through your room as well? No, no, he, he, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Every uh, third day, you're, you're having a, on the on the uh, breakwater and uh, the cell stack. You spent uh, your uh, third day, you, you uh, came in in the morning, but uh, you'd have a day off, but you had to be uh, back on uh, for lighting up, you know, mm. take a bubble watch. Mm. So, uh, and it was the old uh, paraffin lamps? The it? old uh, paraffin, uh, pressure, pressurised uh, paraffin. Mm. And, uh, of course, uh, Depending on the station, 
often the uh, weights had to be uh, wound up to keep the uh, lens uh, revolving. Yeah. And then of course, uh, same with the uh, uh, south uh, stack. You had the uh, the fog on to look after, you know, the compressor and that. Most of the uh, rock stations were explosive uh, uh, type of fog signal. And of course that had to be, uh, the arm had to be wound down from uh, above the lighthouse. Mm. The detonators and uh, charges put on, wound up again. And you had to go back inside to uh, Wait for a, a, a bell to a signal to uh, set the charge off. And then you just have to dash out again, wind it down, and uh, put the charges on and everything. And, uh, and that was all night long if it was foggy. All night long it was foggy. Oh, that was great fun. <laughs> oh no. Did, uh, were you ever at South Stack when they had the, um, was it the donkey? The yes, yes, yes. And what, can you explain what the donkey was used for? The donkey was uh, used to uh, come into Holyhead, uh, pick supplies up, uh, uh, <coughs> your food, uh, anything actually you wanted, and uh, you went back up uh, to take charges up to uh, the North Stack, which was an explosive uh, signal station. Supplied them with the uh, Destinations and charges there. Mm. And I take it, the, um, was it steps down to the south stack then? Or? Yeah, yes, yeah. And the donkey might Well, it, uh, years back, seemingly, the donkey used to be taken down to the lighthouse, but uh, we used to leave it up at the farm opposite the cafe at the top. Yeah. So that used to stay there. Yeah. Mm. So did you enjoy being on the stack then? Oh, yes. They sent me up to South Stack, and then um, I got made principal keeper. Then from there, when they introduced the um, month and mo month on month off, and um, they appointed me principal keeper to Skokum, and then uh, I spent five years at Skokum as principal keeper, and then went back to South Stack um, for about two years again. And then um, I went to Skerries, then Skerries Lighthouse, for five. And then uh, I went back to South Stack then for about 12 months before it actually went automatic. And then um, I got transferred then to the Wolf Rock and then spent about uh, two years on the Wolf um, and uh, then got transferred up to... Um, Hollyhead Control Centre, the old uh, Hollyhead Depot here. And uh, by that time, of course, a lot of the lighthouses were automatic and um, we monitored them in the depot, uh, the North Wales lights in the depot on computers. And, um, and then uh, from, uh, spent about five years in the depot, I think it was five. And uh, then in the... Um, 3rd of October 1994 um, I retired from the service uh, after um, 34 years in the in the job uh, that's unbroken service and uh, of course with the former service I had it would have been about uh, 36 years so um, and that's that's my story I think <laughs> right um, if you go back to the beginning mm-hmm you're married with children. Yes. Where did you meet Megan? Oh yes, uh, I met Megan on uh, Sword Stack Lighthouse actually when I um, uh, when um, one Sunday afternoon as a supernumerary in uh, when I was first in the job, and they came down to the Megan and uh, three or four other girls came down to the lighthouse on a Sunday afternoon, and uh, we. Um, we, we were taking photographs outside and um, we, we got talking to them and uh, we invited them in for tea and um, 
from there we went on and uh, and that was it. I uh, <laughs> we got married. We got engaged and married eventually. Uh, but uh, the first time I actually saw her was uh, through a telescope <laughs> at the top of the steps. So um, was that with L. O. Williams? Huh? Yes, uh, L. O. Williams was the um, he was the keeper in charge then at that time, and um, uh, it was all uh, there was. Um, an old PK called Tressel, uh, Cecil Trussais was there as well, and um, uh, Joe Joe Turvey was another was another assistant keeper there, and uh, a supernumerary with me was uh, Simon Reynolds as well. He was there as well, and um, Jack Mayburn then was was. Um, Another principal keeper who was there when I was there again, and um, he was the chap who was taking the uh, photographs when I met uh, Megan, who was um, in the group, I should say, and he 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 invited the girls to stand in the group and uh, took a photograph of them all. So, uh, and that was it. Um, then we went to. Um, I went to Smalls after that, and then of course uh, um, we got married. Uh, I left. I left the job then and uh, went into the RAF, and um, I got married on embarkation leave. And uh, I um, before going overseas, and uh, we had a short uh, about two days honeymoon, and um, I never saw Megan again for. Um, about 18 months after we got married. <laughs> uh, that was it. But at that time we did uh, two months on and a month off and um, it was quite, uh, it wasn't very nice for married married families, uh, married people uh, at all. It was quite a, a long stint on the, on the lighthouse actually. This was my 2019 visit as a tourist. You enter through the kitchen, which is now, this was the old kitchen. Then you go straight into the sitting room. On your left would be the chairs and the tables. And to the right would be the uh, tiny little table with a telly on. That was a spare bedroom in there for a visiting personnel. And straight through there's the corridor that goes into the engine room ahead of you. To the left now that's the alcove where the telephone was, and on your right was the bathroom. Swinging round now, you come to a storeroom, and then that little room in there was where the PK was, the principal keeper, his bedroom. Then down this corridor, on your left would be stores and stuff like that, a freezer. And on your right are two keepers' bedrooms. This last one coming up on the right now was the one that I occupied while I was down here. Then straight into the engine room. You've got the station batteries on your left and a workbench. Down on the floor in front of you are the alternators for the fog on and the controls there for the fog on. This place is done out for tourism now, so. And here's a close up of the uh, foghorn alternators for the electric foghorn. You now have to follow this route round. And coming up on your left is the standby diesel lister. And yes, you can start it by hand. And then in front of you is the control cubicle for that engine. Then it's to the right and in for the rest of the tour. Quick look up. 
and these steps used to be painted and we used to wash and polish and God knows what up here. The railings were always painted. I'm being closely followed by quite a few tourists so um, I can't linger on these steps. Near in the top, not far to go. One look down to see everybody else and back up. And you go straight into the service room, and there's the, all the automatic stuff on the walls. The curve cupboard is still there, the fog detector seems to be missing and uh, this last steep flight up to the lantern room and it looks like they still polish the brass for the tourists. Up in the lantern there's the emergency battery light now outside on the gallery. There's the North Stack fog signal in the distance there. Now a look up at the lens. Everything's sealed in plastic now so tourists can't put their fingers in and inside there is a tiny little bulb tiny little tube bulb I don't know what sort it is and it was a daily chore when you turn the light out put the curtains up get the steps out or the ladder and you'd be up there uh, washing this thing down once a week with water and methylated spirits but um, most days you would just wipe it down to get any fingerprints off. A last look from the cliff top steps on the way back up. There's a point where you can stop where you're right on the beam of the light.